<laughs> and welcome back to my channel. Um, I've got, I don't know if you can actually see both of them. Both my dogs are sitting right here. Aw, I want to be held. Hi. You want to say hi to the YouTube? What is hi guys! <laughs> she probably hated that. Oh goodness. So today I'm sitting on my living room floor sipping some lemon water with my puppies and wanted to film this video for you guys so I asked you guys on Instagram to send me some questions and today I'm gonna give you guys those answers so pull up the questions my dogs need to get a grip I'm just sitting on the floor we don't need to freak out about it see if I can get through this Q&A without my dogs completely ruining this video. So first question comes from Becca, who for those of you who don't know, I've mentioned her multiple times. I consider her my YouTube bestie. She said, I'm sure you have probably discussed this in a video before, but I would love to hear the story of how you and Anthony met and got together. So if you're totally new to my channel, Anthony is my husband. Um, we have been married just a little over two years now and we met in college and it's kind of a funny story the way we met. I feel like everybody says that, but it's a funny story. We met at a Halloween party and um, I was in a sorority at the time. There's a bunch of girls and these, was it two guys? Yeah, it was him and his friend came in because they were friends with one of the girls in the sorority. Um, and anyways, they showed up and Anthony was one of those guys. and. If you guys can't tell, I'm a chatty person and Anthony's very kind of quiet and reserved. Um, so when I met him, he was just like, hi, my name's Anthony. And I was like, hi, I'm Kelsey, nice to meet you. We were all drinking and playing card games, you know, pre-gaming for Halloween. So I kind of thought nothing of it. I mean, he was cute and I just left it at that. Um, I couldn't even remember his name. <laughs> Um, when I went back to like tell my roommate like I met this hot guy, but I don't remember his name and kind of just left it at that And then I think it was a couple days later. I got a Facebook friend request from him and He kind of sent me a message and then not long later. We realized we were actually neighbors so Which is so crazy. So we lived in an apartment complex with I think there was 10 apartments all side by side, one big long stretched out building. And he was on the end of the building and I was more toward the center. But he saw me getting my mail one day and he was like, do you live at blah, blah, blah apartments? I was like, yeah. He's like, I just saw you get your mail. So anyways, it was a good excuse for us to start chatting more and we would meet outside and talk and it kind of went from there. And yeah, now we're married. Four or five years later, however long ago that was, that was 2012. Yeah. So yeah, we're college sweethearts. <laughs> so next question, um, she said, I wanted to ask how you and your husband stay strong together throughout your infertility journey. And then she, oh, and then she gave me, I, I put this out, um, I think the day before Mother's Day. So a lot of people kind of recognized me on Mother's Day, which I was so, so, so appreciative of. She wanted to know how we stay strong, how we stay strong. Honestly, I think the way we are able to kind of just keep going is we're pretty honest about how we're feeling and we always have really open dialogue. So, especially me, <laughs> I'll bring it up more than he will when I'm like feeling really discouraged or sad or pissed off. Um, I will talk to him about it and that in turn kind of opens him up for him to kind of, you know, the dialogue, it, it opens. So I think the way to stay strong and not just infertility, any issue in marriage is this open communication at all times and never to be afraid to speak your mind, um, whatever, um, whatever the case may be. This question says, how involved are you with Disney nowadays? I loved your old cast member videos. So for those of you that have never seen my first YouTube channel, which is Kelsey doing Disney, it was all about um, my internship experience uh, at Walt Disney World. And the question is like, how involved am I now? Honestly, I'm not involved in any way, shape or form. Um, I, my, my biggest involvement is reading different, uh, different like blogs on Disney things. And yeah, I'd say my involvement with Disney is just about 0%. 
unfortunately. Next question says, how do you stay positive through everything you've been through, job search, TTC, etc.? You inspire me to stay positive. Aw, thank you. I think the way I'm able to stay positive is because I take each day, day by day, and I know that in the grand scheme of things, life will not be like this forever. And I try to remind myself that I'm in a place now that's really bad, and, but it can't, it can't and won't stay like this forever. And I think that's what keeps me optimistic is knowing that things will change. Um, I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know they will. Yeah, I think that's how I'm able to stay positive. I look at the big picture where, yeah, things are rough, but they won't, they won't be forever. I obviously I attribute a lot of that to, to my, relation, my relationship with God. He gives me the positivity and the comfort that I need going through tough times. Um, but yeah, I think that's honestly the best way to stay positive is to kind of not get, not get so wrapped up in what's happening right here, right now, um, and looking at the bigger picture. Because next question, there's actually a couple of different questions. And she said, this is from Kelsey, one of my YouTube besties. She said, what is the thing you look forward to most about carrying a pregnancy to term? And she said, I'd say becoming a mom, but you are a mom. And okay, so I'll answer that one first. I think what I'm most excited about, this is so weird. Um, and I kind of experienced this in my last pregnancy, um, which ended at 10 weeks, three days, was I'm honestly just excited to have a baby bump. <laughs> I started to get a very small, it honestly looked like bloating, but a very, very small baby bump. And I'm just excited to get to experience that. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, right here, right now, it doesn't seem like it's ever going to happen for me. Like it's just like, it's not in the cards. Yeah. Anyways, I'm just excited to actually have a baby bump, which is like so boring, but yeah, that's what I'm excited for. And then she said, do you have any gender reveal plans and how you're going to announce differently next time? Um, yes, I actually have big plans for that. Next time when I announce, this is kind of a bummer, but I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna do this because I've had two miscarriages now and I hated having to backpedal and tell people that we lost the baby, so... In all honesty, the next time I reveal that I'm pregnant, I will probably be to the point where I can't hide it anymore because I'm showing. So what is that, 15, 16 weeks along? Maybe a little further. Um, and the next time I will actually announce, I will announce in the way that I'm pregnant and I'll say the gender at the same time. Um, I've always had this idea of doing some kind of fun gender reveal, but um, with the kind of way my life's gone, I don't think I will want to do that because I'm gonna to wanna to do genetic testing as soon as possible, which tells you the gender. So those are kind of my plans for moving forward. I know it kind of sucks because this is a TTC channel and I'm pretty open, but the next time I am pregnant, I will be waiting a while to actually spill the beans. And then she said, what's something you learned from your last miscarriage that could help other people? One thing I learned from both miscarriages, it's like a double-edged sword because the first time I had a miscarriage, not that many people knew about it. There was no social media announcement, no nothing. And then we lost it and I was sad because no one knew about it. No one knew about, not the miscarriage, but no one knew about the sweet baby that I had. And I wanted their life to be celebrated. But then on the other hand, with the second miscarriage, when I found out I was pregnant, I told the world and then had to backpedal and tell everybody that it was gone. And I don't, I don't know which one was harder. They were both really hard in their own way. The first one was I had to suffer in silence and the second I had to suffer publicly. So honestly, I think what I can take away from anyone who's pregnant is to really, really, really think about when you're going to announce, um, because I used to be all for and advocated for not waiting till 12 weeks, but now I, I see that differently. And it's almost easier not to have to tell the world what happened because I don't know, that's my, that's my advice. And also, yeah, that's all I got. 
just really, really think about when you want to start telling people. The next two questions are from my hubby. Thanks, hubby, for the questions. <laughs> he said, who is your favorite dog, Willow or Xander? Um, I feel like that's like asking me to choose a favorite child. <laughs> no, I love both my dogs. Um, Xander is my American Eskimo, Willow is my Papillon. I love them both. They are both so special to me and they're both so different that I love them both for different qualities that they have. And then he asked, what is my dream vehicle? Which I don't even know why he asked me that. I'm not like a car person. As long as it has four wheels and can drive, I don't really care. So I wouldn't mind like a, like a badass Jeep. I think it'd be fun, but they're not um, wallet friendly when it comes to gasoline. So yeah, um, the one that drives. <laughs> Um, let's see, what is your favorite part of doing YouTube? I think my favorite part of YouTube, I would say that it's the friends that I've made, but I feel like everybody says that. So my second answer would be that there are no rules in the sense that I don't have to report to anybody on, is this a good edit? Is this is this X, Y, or Z. Um, I'm my own boss. I can determine how my editing goes, when I upload, how often I upload. And that's my favorite part of YouTube is being my own boss. Next question says, do you enjoy cooking and what is your favorite food that you can eat every single day? <sighs> do I enjoy cooking? I enjoy cooking sometimes. Honestly, I'm not the best cook. I've learned this about myself. Even if I follow a recipe to a T, somehow it just never comes out right. <laughs> it's so annoying. I like want to be a good cook and I'm just not. It's frustrating. So if you got tips out there to be a good cook, teach me, please. And my favorite food that I could eat every single day if I could, oh my gosh, I'm such a breakfast person. Breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. I would eat donuts or French toast, the, excuse, bread, yeah. Um, those are like my two things. If I could eat every single day with no consequence, I so would. Question is a really good one. Um, was it challenging, cha bleh, was it challenging to transition to one income? Any budgeting tips to make it work? So yes, switching to one income was really difficult, especially when you're, you know, in your early 20s, newly married, you've got student loans, a mortgage, you name it, we were paying it all. Um, so it was really difficult and kind of one of the tips I have for making sure you stay financially successful is to limit yourself um, and saying no to certain things. Um, when we had two incomes, we were we would go out to eat every week or we'd go to some event or thing or we would go out a lot we would go do things and on one budget we really started to restrict ourselves and it was hard and it's a little bit isolating because people like want to go out and do stuff and like when you don't have the money for it it's like we can't we had you know you gotta pick and choose what you spend your money on so that you you know are financially successful budgeting tips I have so many budgeting tips. I feel like I can make a whole video on this. Let me know if you guys would like to see something like that. I think my biggest budgeting tip is making, giving yourself a weekly allowance. Kind of like a, it's kind of like a Dave Ramsey tip is the envelope test. Like how much money from your income do you have in one month that is fun money and divide that up weekly so that you're never spending more than you should be. So, you guys should just check out Dave Ramsey. If you haven't, check out anything and everything Dave Ramsey. He's so helpful when it comes to learning how to budget. But if you guys want me to just make like a budgeting tips video, let me know in the comments because I feel like I have a lot to say about that. How do you keep your faith when TTC? Um, I feel like I kind of already answered this in the question earlier. Um, keeping my faith. Um, I think it's important to take time out of every day to give to God whether that be through devotional or prayer or church or anything um, you will, it's hard to keep your faith if you don't if you don't talk to him just like it's hard to keep a relationship going if you don't talk so I think kind of like with marriage same with God communication is everything so 
take time each day to give to him, talk to him. So I think that's how I keep my faith is I give time back to him and that's having open conversation with God really helps. Um, next question is, how is your husband he handling your reoccurring miscarriages? Have they brought you two together or are you fighting more? Good luck in your journey. Um, that's a, whew, that's a tough question because it's super personal and I wish he was here to kind of give the answer himself, but I'll, I'll guess I'll just kind of answer for him vaguely. Um, he's handled them very well. Um, not right off the bat, especially the second time around. It was very heartbreaking and crushing. Um, I've never, I've never personally see, seen my husband so um, upset in our, in our life together. I've never seen him so upset. So um, he handled it really, really, it hit him head on when it happened, but ever since then he's been very supportive. He lets me rant and ramble about things I want to try, things I want to do, da 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 But when it comes to our marriage and how it's impacted our relationship, I think I'm going to make a video actually all about this because miscarriage and infertility is very hard on a marriage. And I don't think people talk about it enough. Um, honestly, if, if you, since you're asking if it's brought us closer together or f like if we fight more, we honestly, we do fight a little bit more now. Um, I think we're both a little more sensitive to certain topics. So yeah, if you want to like a more in-depth video on that, maybe I can even get him to join me on that video. Let me know in the comments because it's something that's not talked about enough. So the video would be something like infertility and the impact it has on marriage because it's a lot. <laughs> I like this question. What is your favorite cocktail? Let's go to something totally just like chill. Uh, my favorite cocktail ever is a Miami Vice, which is basically a pina colada and a strawberry daiquiri mixed together. Oh my gosh. But the calories, <laughs> but who cares? They're so good. Yeah. So if you've never had a Miami Vice, and that's not actually what I get when I go out to bars. I, I get that at, like on like vacation on a beach. When I go to bars, I'm usually getting an amaretto sour. What would your dream career be? Like what company would you work for or self-employed? Would you continue vlogging and be sponsored as a possible path? What direction would you like to take your vlog? Okay, so let me kind of break this one down a little bit. I would love to be self-employed through my vlog. So I would be my own boss through YouTube. Um, that, that, that's, that's kind of the dream for me, but I also am still trying to figure out the direction of this channel because it's kind of split down the middle between TTC, Journey to Parenthood, and then also like organization cleaning vlog style. So I like the path it's on and I think I'm gonna keep it that way. But yeah, I also need to think about what can help grow the audience, which it's like YouTube nitty gritty, which you don't really like to think about, but you do want to cater to the people. And sometimes not all the people really co co correlate with those two things. So in an ideal world, I would love to be my own boss and be self-employed doing YouTube and blogging. Um, but um, exciting announcement. I guess I'll just say it here at the end um, that I was going to make a whole video about it. Um, but I got a job. I'm really excited about it. And I start in six days. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to make a fully dedicated video on what that is and the job I got. But to be completely honest, I think it's the perfect, the perfect job for me. And I'm so, 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 so grateful that I got it and still am baffled that I did. And yeah, full video coming on that soon. Well, that's the last, that's the last question. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your questions. Thanks for being ballers. Let me know in the comments of those couple things that I mentioned on videos to make, which one you want to see kind of first or the most, yeah, let me know. So if you enjoyed this Q&A, give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it as it does support my channel and lets me know what you guys like. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.